Hi, Facebook family and friends. This is T. Hatchet, and GL. And we are the Hatchet Chronicles. Um, tonight's topic is about, well, we're going to wait for a few minutes to see how many people, if a couple of people catch on. Okay, they're coming. Okay, tonight's topic, we were asked, well, someone asked the question to me, how did my husband get started with producing and how did we start working together and how is it working together so we're gonna this segment is done this episode is about how my husband got started in producing you know about the business and then we'll end on us working together in the entertainment business so the question was asked about production and producing and how did you get started in it It's been a long time. I just, I just I got started because I was after being a DJ. I was always into music, um, and when I was a DJ, actually, yeah, yeah. When I was a DJ, I used to put different, like, put different beats that I like to hear together, and. Uh, you know, once I found out, you know, how you could connect with the studio, it was over from there. You know, putting a, a break beat with maybe an acapella or maybe, you know, two breakdowns of a record. Just having it for what you want to hear, basically, is, you know, how I got into production. And then, you know, I mean, it, it goes back so far back where, as far as the equipment is concerned, when I was doing music. Uh, well, let's talk about that. First of all, can you explain to the people, a lot of people don't even know what production is and what's involved in production. Production is making of the music. You know, if there's a singer that sings, rapper that raps, there's a, you know, even with uh, poets that, that do poetry over music. The production, it, the production side is the the producing of the music, and you don't actually have to be hands on with the equipment to be a producer either. You, if you have the melodies in your head and you have things that you know you want to hear put together, that's your actual production. So, um, you know, a lot of times people get, you know. Uh, they get the they get it mixed up, but um, you know they think that you have to know how to work the equipment and all of that stuff. I mean that's a plus, but that's not actually production. That's that's engineering what you're hearing. Okay, so production is just making beats. Is that what? It's making beats. It's doing melodies. It's doing chords. It's it's doing breakdowns. It's a, it's doing the arrangement of the the, the, the song putting the breakdown where you want the breakdown, you put the bridge where you want the bridge, the, the verse where you want the verse, that's actually arranging, but that's part of the production, yes. And so what exactly do you love about, you know, you say that, I've heard you say, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. I've heard my husband say that his, that he started out as DJ and he went from DJ to an artist and then he ended with production because he found that his gift was production. So my question to you is what made um, production your gift? I mean, what made you feel like that's where you wanted to be out of being an artist, out of being a DJ? Why is production? Why did you feel production more so in your spirit than anything else? because it allowed me to expand my creativity. With being an artist, rhyming and singing and stuff like that, you can, you can, you know, do what you do as far as creativity is concerned. And this is just my opinion. I mean, other people might feel differently, but I feel like production, learning sounds, and I don't know how to read music, but if I hear something, I can play it. 
you know, I play by ear. If you know, to just be able to put notes together and find it, figure out what chords are chords, and you know, um, it's a vast world with dealing with production. You know, and and then too, there's really no format. There's no format. You can develop your own style, which is your own sound. Um, wow, it's, it's it's endless. Your creativity is endless when you're doing production. You can sample. You can do original. I mean, um, like I said, it's endless. To me, there's no there's no cap on it. When I was DJing, I did every college from North Jersey to Norfolk, Virginia. You know, I DJ at all these colleges, doing all the homecomings and stuff like that. And it was cool, but at a certain point, you know. The most you could do is, you know, just do parties. Now, don't get me wrong, DJing and doing parties, there's some DJs that make 60,000 a party, 80,000 a party. That's cool, but that wasn't, that wasn't what I wanted to do. That wasn't. DJ, um, what's his name, Kid Capri. Yeah, like Thanks Kid Capri. Kid Capri, Capri. Mm -hmm. DJs are making the money these yeah. days. Yeah, Jazzy Jeff, uh, yeah. you know, Adam. It's a bunch of DJs, uh, but that just wasn't my niche. My niche is when I walked into a studio and saw the board and, man, listen, I found out about the two-inch tape and how you could just play stuff and run it back and record it from the spot you left off at and just, like, it's just, uh, it's a whole other production is a whole other world to me. And that was what tweak my psyche because man with sounds and all of that stuff and it's just like I said before it's endless. And how do you incorporate that into a relationship because we have talked about this before because it's hard for those who are in the entertainment world it's very hard to have a relationship unless your partner is, and this is just my opinion, unless your partner is in the business, because only someone who, they say, you know, you don't know a person till you walk a mile in their shoes. Well, that goes with the entertainment business. Only a person who's in it understands it. And that's not every case, but it's a large percentage of the case. If you're not in the business and you don't understand, you know, what they what's that saying? You know, you don't understand my 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 plight. Yeah, my plight. Well, if you're not in the business, you it's hard for you to understand. Like for instance, my husband is a person who stays in the studio twenty four seven. I knew that when I got with him. But I'm also in the business, so I understand the artistic niche of like for uh artist who sings there were a raps. Their world is walk, talk, music, you know, singing, writing, you know. And for a producer, his world um, is in the studio making beats. Here, Even when he's with me sometimes, he's not with me. And, but, and that's okay for me because I understand that world. Um, but as we spoke about before, you know, relationships has been... Um, I, it, damage is a good word. Am I making a good word? Relationships has ended because even with myself being in the business and being a um, manager and you know promoting artists, I've had relationships in because it's like you know you're always up in another man's face. What they didn't understand is the entertainment business is a man's world. Now, there are women who we are trying to change that. We're trying to make it equal. But as it stands, it's a, it's a man's world. So, yes, I uh, I was always talking to a man or in the man's face because that's who I was presented with, but it wasn't on the level that they made it on. With my husband, you know, he's always in the studio. So I'm sure in life that had to be because, the first of all, the picture of people um, assuming what the studio life is like from TV and movies, which are fake, 
you see um, a bunch of half naked women, you know, everybody getting drunk, women sitting on everybody's lap. And that's hardly what the studio life is really about. <laughs> they really don't even pay attention unless you're singing or, or doing or or doing what they're doing. They're not even looking at no half naked woman when they're in their their mode, when they're in their space, writing, producing, making beats, you know, um, singing, whatever they're doing. That's where the mode they're in. They're not in the mode of the other things that you see on TV. But talk to us a little so about yeah, that. TV gives you a different even when you're recording, but that perception of, you know, naked women running around and all of that stuff, or half naked women and smoking and drinking and all of that stuff, that, no, no. I mean, you know, you know, jokers may smoke or have a drink or something, you know, and that does sometimes peak your creativity and, you know, stuff like that. But when you and your, I know for me, and people, actually people that I've recorded with, stuff like that, when we in the studio and we record and we vibe it, man, it ain't all, they, all that other stuff, we don't have time for that. Like that, that'll actually piss you off because, you know, you barely want people to be talking a whole bunch while you're trying to record something or you're listening back or something like that. Like that stuff is, it's really, uh, sometimes that stuff gets to be a headache. So. You know, people's perception of the studio is, is totally, you know, some people, I'm not going to say everybody, you know, people that don't know, you know, their perception of the studio is totally discombobulated. So tell me about relationships in the studio. Did, did yeah. you find it hard in the past to have relationships yeah. and be in the studio? Uh, yeah. And was most of those people, people who did not, wasn't in the business. business? No, they weren't in the business. They weren't in the business. And this, you know, the basic thing is, is you have to have an understanding with the person that you're with. The person that you're with has to understand, you know, what it is you do for a living. You know, what it is that makes you the money, what it is that, you know, sometimes it could be just something that, you know, gives you a sense of serenity. You know, it don't always have to be, you know, in the studio to record to, or, or be about money. It could be about, you know, you might have had a crazy day or something like that or, you know, a crazy situation happened. I know for me, and I'm not saying this for everybody, but for me, you know, um, you have situations that happen and sometimes my outlet in order for me to be able to deal with it is, is I'll go in my studio and I just lock in and, I, and I'll create music and or even, you know, even and it's not even about creating all the time. It's just sometimes I might just go in and do a listening session by myself. That's your relief. It's like and just some listen people to music. eat when they get upset. Some people smoke cigarettes. His relief is music and being in the studio. And when I do that, I'm 100 percent better. Like, you know, it's, it's still tough for me, you know, since my, my, my the situation that happened with my sister, since my sister was murdered. But, you know, sometimes when, you know, I get in that mood and I'm thinking about my sister, you know, if I'm in the studio, that helps me. It helps me to be able to deal with that, you know, and I get through and, you know, I listen to songs that she and I like together and, you know, stuff like that. And it helps me. It's, it's, it's therapeutic. You know, the studio is therapeutic for me. Now, I'm not going to say everybody else. And I know I keep saying that, but, you know, people out there may say, oh, man, that's just, but for me, that's my thing. If you chew gum, chew it the best that you can. If you shoot bull, <laughs> shoot the best game of nine ball, shoot the best game of eight ball. If you play basketball, Run a full court five or six times. I mean, whatever it is that you do that gives you peace and serenity, that's what you do in order to keep your sanity. Insanity. And you have to just, you know, pray and ask God to give your mate the understanding that, you know, this is something 
that you've done all your life. And, you know, this is just something that it's not just a hobby. I would like to touch on that a little bit because, you know, I said that I suggested, which is for me, that your mate be in the same business as you are because it helped. But everybody is not like that. So here's my thing. What do you suggest for couples who, let's say there's a couple out there, we know a couple, a few couples out there who one person is in the business and the other person's not, and they talk about it all the time, how, you know, it's interrupted because the other person don't understand. What do you suggest for couples who may not be, have the same interests or may not be in the same business together, especially the entertainment business, because a lot of people, well, I, let's just say some females that, their mate might be in the business. They're like, well, you know, you're too old for that. Well, you ain't made it now. You're not going to make it, you know. And it kind of, you know, they want to be supported, but their mate is not supporting them. It's like, you know, go get a nine to five. This is not working. What do you suggest for people like that who knows that they have a talent and, you know, who understand that it takes a long time. you got to be in the trenches <laughs> for if you're going to do it right. Well, for that aspect of it, I would say, you know, if, if, if you're a male and you're into it or if you're a female and you're into it and your mate is not, invite them to the studio with you. You know, bring them to the studio. Let them see what it is that you do. Let them get a feel for, you know, the, the enjoyment that you have. They may not enjoy it. You never know. But if you don't invite them in, if you don't bring them into your world to show them what it's about, you know, that argument is still there. You know what I mean? If you're not making money from it, you know, just it, it, you have to communicate and explain to them that, you know, a dream doesn't come true, you know, just because, you know, you hit the studio and now you did a good song. So now you got a song on an MP3, you got it on a CD or you have it on, you know, a cassette tape or whatever. Now, since you have it there, their thinking is, okay, so now you recorded the song, so now you're going to be big. Don't work like that. You know, sometimes you have to sit down and explain it to them. And, you know, you just have to bring them into your world. You have to show them, you know, and prayerfully that they're, they're receptive to it. What if know? they don't want to be in the world? Man? If they don't want to be in that world, then, you know, I just say that, you know, I just say pray about it because, you know, that's a, that's a very, very rough place to be. That's a that's a terrible rough place to be when you know that's this is what you do and you live music you breathe music and 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 you know you have someone in your ear constantly you ain't gonna make it you know and what it does is it you know you have a dream and number one you know when you're chasing your dream it's hard enough as it is mm. when you don't see things unfold. Mm -hmm. But then if you have someone that's constantly in your ear and they're not supportive of your dream and they're constantly tearing you down, now, you, now you're fighting a double, you know what I mean? You're fighting a double sword, man. You're fighting a double game, you know? And then you still find somewhere to muster up the strength to keep, you know, keep your own, you know, keep your own strength there so that you can, you know, continue on your fight and to continue with your dream. But I just say, for me, man, listen, if that's your dream and that's what you want to do, continue to follow your dream. Hey, Clay. Don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing won't work. It can't work. None of that. Hey, because PK. That's, that's, not, that's not the truth. You know, if it's your dream, follow it. Run with it. And, you know, what you have to do is compromise and make time for your mate that's not into it, you know, and give them that the time that they need and the time that they deserve. I think but communication is yeah. another big key. I know with me and my husband, even though we're both in the same business, when me and him first got together, we communicated a lot. And one of the things that he told me was, well, we was actually discussing another relationship of his, but he told me that, you know, he's in the studio 24-7. And he asked me if that would bother me. And knowing him and knowing who he is, um, it, I knew it wouldn't bother me because I'm in the business and I understand it. 
for one. But the other thing is knowing him and knowing who he is, it's important for him to be happy as well as me. It's not a one-sided relationship. And so I know that's his sanity because you can be, there's one thing that I find, you know, sometimes people fall in love or people get into a relationship and they think that because they're in a relationship, then that relationship is supposed to be their whole, whole world. No. And they don't have time for nothing else. And that person is not supposed to have time for nothing else. And it's just supposed to be them two sitting there, you know, and nobody else is supposed to be in their world. And that's just not realistic. And that's just not what life is about. You know, he had a life before me. I had a life before him. Right. So, you know, you have to know how to, you have to be adult about it. You have to be able to exist in your world with each other, plus exist at, on your own. But that's something about knowing yourself. And that's something and knowing, about being good with yourself. And knowing you what start. you want. Exactly. And knowing who you are and knowing who you're with. Mm -hmm. And questions are always great. It's always good to ask questions, you know, before you get into a relationship. We like, did that a lot. <laughs> because, I mean, look, I, I've been through several relationships where, you know, my studio work kind of hindered my relationship. And I tried to explain to, you know, the other party that, you know, this is what I do. This is what I do for a living. And, you know, it still didn't come across as, you know, what, what it should have. And it's hard to juggle that and then juggle your relationship at the same time because it draws a wedge in between you and your mate. It really will. It really, really will. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat nothing. But, you know, if this is what you're doing and somebody is constantly tearing you down, tearing you down, tearing you down, don't even want to listen to your creation, don't want to come to the studio with you, but has a whole bunch to say about it, that'll draw a wedge. Like, wow, what do you want me to do? Like, this is what I do. Like, you know what I mean? I and know jealousy. what you do. Jealousy and is then, another side right. of it. And women are big, big on that. So my suggestion would be to just have, just get the best understanding that you could get. Try to keep the lines of communication open and, you know, Pray about it and continue to walk your walk. And don't get into the jealousy thing. Because that's I find with women, I from what I've heard, it's mostly the women who are jealous. Yeah, it is because of the simple fact that they like I said, like, you know, when you watch these shows on TV and you see, you know, jokers in the studio and they got women in there with, you know, these little two inches of fabric skirts on <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Just pasties on their, you know, nipples and stuff like that. And everybody's in there with glasses of grandma and yay, they got blunts long as a boomstick. <laughs> you know, they they like that's like, you know, and my husband is in there with that or my, my boyfriend is in it. That's not, you know, that's that's a that's a whole nother that's a whole nother perception. That perception, it happens, don't get me wrong, and I wouldn't lie about it. It happens, but not while you're recording. And then the thing is, is like when you're recording, that costs money. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. I mean, the studios out here, they, man, like, especially the, 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 the big joints, you're going to that joint, the studio time is $200 an hour. And you got you don't have time to flirt and with no. You, you know said what I mean? something, baby, like, and that's, that's a that's, that's a good yeah. issue. You said you said take them with you, but there's a lot of studios who doesn't allow. I've worked with producers who doesn't allow anybody in there yeah. that's not doing the. So sometimes yeah, it's hard too. to take a person with you. But if see what that is is this: if I was if I got called to go to quad studio and work, you know, I I put my you know. I lay my cards down, you know, in the conversation before I go. Mm -hmm. My wife is in the business, you know, um, she's coming with me. Yeah, but then there's some people who are not in the business. I mean, one right. good thing well, about our studio is we say, hey, bring your family so they can see what you're doing because we understand it and because we're working with independent artists who are just starting up and we are trying to teach them a business. But there are studios, you know, especially the major studios, 
Yeah, Ooh. they don't allow. allow yeah, that. they don't allow that. But Jewish. you can like at least have your mate drop you off or you know walk you to the door so that they can see that it's not you know what they think it is that you are actually doing what you're supposed to do but like my husband said communication is the key you need to communicate and sit down and have a conversation and and you know the trust and trust trust is even if you wasn't in the business, even if you wasn't running out, even if you had the nine to five and doing what you're supposed to do, if the person doesn't have trust and communication, the relationship is. You don't, you don't have a relationship. Yeah. There is no relationship. You're just, you know, tapping out. Exactly. So that's important. I mean, my husband and I, yes, we do work together. PK, what's happening, brother? I know I'm a little late, but what's going on with you, man? Bless up, bless up. We're in ATL, PK. We have relocated. Who is that, Steve White or Sean White? Or Willie something? Straw. Willie Straw. What's going on, Willie? Uh, um, my husband and I work together 24-7 um, in this business, and a lot of people have asked, you know, how do you work together <laughs> and, and be together? I mean, you know, for some people, I guess it is a problem but we have understanding um i i have my job to do and he has his job to do and business is business and from the start we had an understanding of that you know i have i represent my husband um i'm his manager i have a contract on my husband now some people might say well, wow that's your husband why would you have a contract? because business is business and we un we both understand that, so we don't play when it comes to business. And so that contract is for the both of us, and that's what we teach our artists um, and the people that we work with. Is you know you have to have an education of business. My husband always says that this business is um, ten percent talent and ninety percent business. business. And so I always tell everybody about the contract that I have with on my husband because or with my husband because that shows them that we are strictly about the business. Um, we work together. I am his assistant. I also manage him. You know, I have different hats and I'm his partner. And I can separate all of them when it's time for me to be his assistant. That means I'm his assistant. That means that he is the boss and I listen to what he says because we're doing his business. You're we're damn business. right. <laughs> Whatever. No. <laughs> um, speaking of, so when we go back to husband and wife, I'm the boss now. <laughs> no. Um, when I'm his partner, then we have equal say um, in the business. Right. When I am managing him, it's sort of equal too because basically he has the last word because it's his career. But, you know, I have my input in it. So it's knowing how to wear those different hats and still come back and be a couple because at the end of the day, when all this business is said and done, then we're husband and wife. That's right. We got to lay down. Yeah. So that's. And thank um, God for the day, and now we have to be husband and wife exactly. because the business is taken care of. Exactly. And it's hard. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's hard. It's difficult sometimes. You know, um, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Tonight, I did not want to sit here and do this. I really didn't. I really did not. I'm really not in the mood to do this Hatcher Chronicles tonight. And this was a dream that my wife had, and, you know, God put it on her heart to do it. And I'll compromise, and i do this. I don't like being on camera. I don't. That's just not my thing. I like the background, you know. Um, tonight, I really did not feel like doing this. But my wife was stomping around, <laughs> stomping <laughs> stuff. You know, her oh, he's going to really put me out there. I'm going to be honest. We can't lie to, to yeah, our viewers. I got... In she my got mad, mode. you know, her face was dragging on the floor. Which, by the listen, way, I knew would work. <laughs> my face, you know, listen, I'm in pain tonight, man. My legs is killing me. Here's my thing. Wait, and I got up, I came in here, and I sat down. And my attitude was through the roof. But 
I pushed all of that aside because this is my wife and I love her. And I'm going to always try later, to compromise <laughs> with her. I'm going to pay for and it later. No, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to always try and do the right thing because I want God to bless my marriage. And that's the most important thing. You know, sometimes you get in your attitude and you get your way and stuff like that. But, you know, in order for you to have a blessed household and a blessed marriage, you got to to submit to God first mm -hmm. if you're the man of the house. That's and you, you also have to, have to compromise and you have women to compromise and with your wife. You do. You know, I, man, I didn't just want to sit here tonight. You know, like Sunday nights, we have movie night. Friday nights, we have movie night. We pushed the movie night back tonight because we had to do this. You know what I mean? It was actually supposed to be done earlier, but my game was on today, you know? And, and that was my compromise. That, he wanted to watch the game. So it's like, okay, watch your game, and then we'll do the Hatchet Chronicles afterwards. And when I said, okay, we got to do the Hatchet Chronicles, it's like, man, we're going to have to do that another day. No, that's not going to. And let me explain something. Sometimes I do compromise, and sometimes I do get bratty. My husband knows that when I – Put my mind to doing something. I'm 100% and I'm not going to stop. And it has to be done right. I will work on like if the computer is messed up. He doesn't even call me no more when his computer messed up. Because he knows that I'm going to work on it for hours until it's fixed. I'm, when I do something, I, I, I don't know how to give up on it or stop or not put my 100% into it. This Hatchet Chronicles is important to me. It's close to my heart. And especially since I know that it's touched so many people. So for me, we have to put 100% into it like we do everything else, like we do the business, like we do life, like we do, um, like he does production. It has to be 100% or I don't want to do it. And because it's on my heart, I want to do it. But it has to be done right. That's just how I am period, in business life always. So for me, because we haven't been consistent in season three with the Hatchet Chronicles, I'm trying to be consistent. So there is no, you know, I don't feel like doing it tonight. Let's do it next week. Wait, 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 wait. I, on my behalf, on my fight, and for my play, Hatchet Chronicles, y'all know from the beginning, for those who've been following us from the first episode to this episode right here. I always say, sometimes I ain't going to be here. And she knows that, and I yes, told her that. Yes, and that's fine, so, but not on the second episode of the third season. This is only the second episode. Okay, who's the tell? Well, okay, all right, I understand that. But I'm telling you right now, I'm in a world of pain. Right. And I understand that, and I'll, baby. Listen, wait, and wait, 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 Babe, I don't feel like doing it tonight. Then it would have been like, okay, well, you know, I'll do it myself. But you said, you said after the game. So my thing is you made me wait all that time. I said, okay, fine. I gave you that game. And then you said, oh, we are, I don't feel like doing it tonight. I said, you, you can't do that. That would, That's not fair. If y'all understand what she's saying, that's what's up. But if you want to really find out what's happening, Go to our first uh, episode. Go back to last Sunday and just, you know, listen to that one. And I'm saying we, that I, I agree I'm, with you. Can I but finish? Can I finish? Y'all, here y'all go. See, this is go the Hatchet Carnival go, go, going at it. <laughs> go back to last Sunday and see what was said about this whole thing right here. We don't have to go into it. Look, I'm here, and I was just explaining to y'all how I compromise because it's the right thing to do, okay? We didn't have to get into the back Please, the whoever's oh, watching right. and make a comment on this. Uh, and if you're watching, please make a comment. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm just saying to, I wasn't saying that to, to cause a problem or start a, you know, ruckus or anything. <laughs> I was just saying Sorry, that Rocky. to say, 
you know, how much you have to compromise no matter what. You have to compromise. You have to, you have to do things equally, and you have to do things decent and in order. And I Point agree. Blank, period. On both ends. And let me just say, I know being a brat is not the answer to things. Understand that, because that is not the right way. I'm not advocating being a brat when you don't get your way. But in this particular case, you know, we're not perfect. And since he put us out there, let me just say, yes, I had a, a little bit of attention tantrum to get my way. Now, it's not always. I'm not even, it's not even going to work always, <laughs> right. but every now and then it doesn't hurt. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just I wouldn't suggest everybody try that because everybody's not me. <laughs> I wouldn't suggest it either. And I wouldn't suggest I do it all the time. I'm just saying every now and then it works for me. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, what time is it? Um, it's, it's only been 30 minutes. Uh -huh. And we didn't, oh, by the way, in, when we first started, we did not um, do our little um, hits. So um, let's just take a minute uh -huh. to do that. We can do that when we start. Okay, you want to do the hits then? Well, you can if you want. I just thought we'd take a minute and just say my book that had the um power of God is still up um for sale. It's fifteen ninety nine plus three dollars shipping and handling. Um just text me or my husband. I am me or my husband with your name, your address. Um I accept PayPal, um Cash App. And that's about it. Um, well, we got a me and Trey got a uh, project that we get ready to release. Um, I really um, don't want to get too, too deep into the details of it, but um, it's a project that we have worked on for quite some time. And um, it's a project that we're going to put out, and but it's going to be a whole different demographic. So, you know, um, I'll keep you all more, you know, uh, up on what's going on, but I just felt felt like I dropped a little jewel tonight, man. So, you know, y'all could be looking out. You know, you'll see some posts and stuff like that on the gram, on the book, you know, Twitter and all of that stuff. You know, from time to time, I'm gonna be throwing little tidbits out there for y'all to check out and stuff like that. And then when you know it's crunch time and it's coming down to you know the project being put out. Then you know the blast will get different, and I'll let y'all know exactly what's going on and how it's going about and stuff like that. So, you know, just keep your eyes peeled, man. I got a nice project coming out, you know, real soon. Me and Trig, me and Trigger the Gambler. Um, That's awesome. uh, the Orphan Project. I have a uh, documentary. We actually shoot a documentary. Um, I'm not going to go into too much about that. Um, I kind of wanted it to be a surprise, but I'm going to let y'all know we are working on a documentary, and um, when it comes to you, man, it's going to be, listen, we really digging deep, and I believe that, you know, anybody that was a fan of the Orphans, anybody that's a fan of mine, y'all going to love this documentary, man. This documentary is really going to take you, you know, deep into to the depths of the Jersey music scene, you know, and... Um, Hey, Rara. Hey, work day, man. What's up? <laughs> you know, uh, the documentary going to be dope, man. So, you know, um, just stay tuned for that. Um, I yeah, I know that loss made him not want to do anything. He was sitting up there talking about, they got time. I was shaking my head. <laughs> he was like, don't be shaking your head. <laughs> That's not for the Chronicle. <laughs> The uh, joke, boys. Yeah, that's, 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 we're not even talking about this. This is for something else. <laughs> Look, that just made him feel worse. <laughs> no, because I was talking. You just oh, I'm sorry. Interrupted me I'm that. sorry for no, interrupting you. No, I was talking to Rara. I'm done. See what I was saying. <laughs> Stars on Barton, what's up, bro? Alright, he's a little um
Testy too. <laughs> no, I'm not. They lost today too, so it's all right. Now, see, you had to put that out there. I'm huh? just saying. <laughs> Okay, so we got the Hatchet Chronicles, and we got—I mean, we got the um, your projects going on. My book is still for sale, as I said, fifteen ninety nine plus three dollars shipping and handling. Going back to the subject of um, working together in the production business. What about it? How do you find? How do you? Mix the two, like being in the production business and having a relationship. And I think you hit on that a little bit yeah, that by saying that, you know, the compromise is there. That's the biggest thing, the compromise. Is there. And be truthful. And be honest. So, I mean, that's, that's it. Okay. Well, I let me just say this, and let me just say this to the fans, baby. Thank you so much for compromising with me tonight, and thank you for so much to recognizing how important the Hatchet Chronicles is to me, and actually, you know, taking that time. The brother is saying after the game. My ass. He don't want to hear my shit. <laughs> I don't expect us to do good this year. I don't expect us to do good. I don't know, man. We gonna do good. Y'all gonna do good too. This is just a few cakes and a few cakes in the armor. Dalvira. Yeah. Vera, what's happening? Hey, Vera. What's going on with you? So, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I love you for your thoughtfulness and your compromise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's not very happy with me tonight, guys. So, as you can see, this is we always try to be real at the Hatchet Chronicles. This is the real tonight. He is not happy because he did not want to do Hatchet Chronicles tonight. So, no, I don't. Being on this camera, this is cool, but I just uh, hey there now. We doing good. We doing good. Trying to get this, get through this. Uh, this uh, <laughs> we trying to get through this chronicles tonight. Because <laughs> he's not feeling the chronicles tonight. <laughs> Praise God, because it's done. Uh, it's nothing but God keeping it going. And I'm thankful. And I know how to uh, be receptive when it's time to be receptive. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> when the Lord say, do, do it, you got to be receptive to it, whether you like it or not. Basically, so, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So the Lord told you to get your butt up and do it with me. Because, because I gave you my word and said that I would. And I have to be, I, you, I have to lead by example. So, you know, if I say I'm going to do something, I got to do it. If I want my household to be right, I have to do what I have to do in order for my household to be right. So if I, you know. And that's why I love him. He is definitely a man of God, and I love that about him. Um, I appreciate y'all for tuning in and all of that tonight, man. Um, I definitely love y'all. So next week, I'll probably be doing a, a Chronicles by myself. I'm not going to say that that's so. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I, I really don't want to do Hatchet Chronicles, and sometimes I'm enthused about doing it. Sometimes I don't want to do it, but when we start, then my enthusiasm goes through the roof, and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it now, but I just still really did not want to be in this place tonight, and um, I'm just, you know, just going through a little something, a little personal something, so... Um, 
Well, Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> Do you still love me? That's not for the Chronicles. <laughs> I'm talking about questions as far as you just want to love me all the time. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Grog. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> oh, God. Um, as we always say, please, if you have any topics you would like to discuss, tonight's topic was um, asked by someone, and so we discussed it. So if you have any topics that you would like us to discuss, be it relationship or the business or anything like that, please just I and me, my husband, um, text us, whatever, you know, however you get the information to us, get it to us, and we will discuss that topic. Um, and don't forget, excuse me, um, we also still working on this YouTube thing, man, so we can get the YouTube page up. And, you know, up and running, um, you know, we're going through some things with the cameras and all of that. So, you know, bear with us. I know this is kind of dark tonight, but once we get, you know, everything right, you know, we're still working on some stuff. We're still getting acclimated in the new house and everything. You know what I mean? But we definitely, you know, still working towards trying to get the YouTube page together. So go to um, YouTube, The Hatchet Chronicles, like just like it. It's old the, the old um it's actually season one and season two up there. So like it, go there, like it so I can see subscribe to it. Yeah, subscribe to it so I can see, you know, a certain amount of people and then we can it'll help a smooth transfer over to the YouTube. And as he said, we are getting, you know, this is the studio, it's new, we're in our new place, so it's just bear with us. I, and we appreciate the support because yes, we do. it's because of you guys that is, there is even a season three. So many people have asked us. I didn't even realize how many people actually watched the Hatchet. And I definitely want to shout out um, Star Zone Barton. That's my man. And I don't know. <laughs> no matter what, it seems like he always tuned in. So, you know, your, your Bart, man, Star Zone, I definitely Thank appreciate you. you, bro, for tuning in. Every time we on, man, you always pop up. I always see you pop up, man. So I definitely appreciate that, man. You my man. And I, this is one of my dudes, man, for like 22 years. I've been on him for like 22 years. We went, you know, we, we went to school together and all that. Well, we appreciate you. We really so, appreciate you. So Star, you. man, I definitely appreciate you, Aki. Definitely that. My brother says, happy wife, happy life. It's a blessing to have what... Oh, thank you. Y'all all have. That's why he's my favorite. Thank you, Rod. <laughs> but you ain't got to, you know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't got to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Vin, you have a good night, too. I'm going to call you one day. You can call in and we can have, you know, have you on as a guest or something. You know what I mean? Hey, Pastor my favorite Vera. cousin. Hey, Kalika. Kalika James, what's happening? Robert Chambers, what's up, Rob? Cousin Rob, what's happening? Flatfoot? Because he says that we're super cute and very comical. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, um, yeah, we're going to uh, try to get this YouTube page together. Um, and for those of y'all that just joined, uh, just joining in, um, it was, the topic was about relationships with a person that's in the music business or the music industry, how do you cope with that? And start, and how did he start in the business and what production is? Because a lot of people don't even know what production is and what he does. Yeah. So he explained what he did and we appreciate, thank you for sharing what you do. Yeah, I, I just don't give more tricks away. I, I, give you, I, give you, I spoon feed them. Oh, okay. All right. Because everybody can't do what I do. All right. That's right, baby. I mean, and there's some, you know, some cats out there that's that's nicer than me, but, you know, I, I got something for your ASS. Yes, you do, baby. Mm. I'm nice with it. <laughs> yes, you are, baby. This is a family show. I'm, I'm talking about what you're talking about. Yeah, you veered off. <laughs> I know. You, you, you don't, that's not, no. I was talking about what you talking about, baby. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> I, I enjoy y'all, man. I have a good time with y'all, man. I love y'all. 
You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you tuning in. And all Robert that Chambers stuff. is getting married. Word, cuz? What? Congratulations. What he said, I'll hit you tomorrow. You got jokes. LOL. Love you, fam. Um, uh oh, son. Congratulations. Rob is my cousin. We, 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 oh, we, Rob. We, yeah, when we went oh, to see, Plainfield. Rob, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I don't know car. the names you of Rob. You whispering? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know the names. Like, I know Rob. I don't know Robert, you know, because y'all don't have, like, the rig. Y'all use. All the names. Nicknames. Yeah, y'all use nicknames. So if he had to say Rob, I would have known. But congratulations. Yeah, make sure you call me tomorrow, son. I, I got the, you know, we need to have a little conversation on that there, fams. Oh, boy. What's up? What you mean? You had said, you ain't had to, when he had said, um, happy life, happy wife, and, and you was like, yeah, but you ain't got to. And he's like, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Rob, what you doing, man? What you doing? Um, this ain't even a conversation about the Chronicles no more. We just bigging up everybody. That's, yeah, we just that's tapped in. I enjoy that's our right. fans. It's, it's you know sometimes yeah, we gotta we give to it to y'all. Hey, Rob, man, you gotta call me, bro. Rob, I said, tell Rob if she can love him and that big ass <laughs> He better marry her. <laughs> Rob, I said that, okay? <laughs> well, a nigga do wear a size 8 hat, an 8 fitted. Uh. So, man, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're not going to get into that, though, on Chronicles, man. But, yo, know, look, we do whatever we do on here, and we appreciate everybody for following along, man, tuning in and all of that stuff. Um... Like I said, we got a couple of projects going on. Hey, H. H. Williams, what's up, Five Kings, man? You know the rhetoric. You know what I'm saying? Yo, this, um, I, I know something is jumping off this weekend, man. I've been, I've been meaning to call you, man, but, you know, we're going to get it there. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for tuning in, it my guy. It ain't easy moving, let me tell you. This That's a fact. That's a fact. Something else, H. That's a fact. But, uh, you know, we're going to definitely, you know, put it together and all that. So, uh, let's see, Robert. He said, man, I'm about to pick up your youngin from work. I know I got his ball headed <laughs> ASS. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> Sticking back with my lady watching a movie I don't want to watch. Oh, that's no, you just, that's, that's compromising, compromising. y'all. And what's the movie? What are y'all watching? So, Rara right, right, got a different verse to compromise. <laughs> Come on now, bro. Yeah, that's my little. Tell her to just thing. offer you a bean pie. <laughs> <laughs> just buy you a bean pie. You watch the movie. It ain't that easy. <laughs> you, you got it a little different. <laughs> that's the beat king right there. <laughs> <laughs> we get ready to have movie night. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna join y'all tonight. H said we. Got